Joining me on the Golf Ireland podcast this week is Brendan Lawler. Brendan, first of all, welcome to the pod. Thank you. It's good to be here. Brendan, first of all, are you wrecked? Are you tired? What's the story with the body today? Yeah, I was tired. And obviously, we didn't have the slog that the boys had to get to the final. I think it was nine or ten rounds or something. But it was tired. I was tired, and it's the wind wrecks you. I had a buggy, but I done. I'm, I walked most of it. But such an incredible event. Really, really enjoyed it. So it is the first ever ISPS Handa G4D at the West. Um, it took place yeah. the weekend. Tell us first a bit about the event, maybe. Yeah. So um. ISPS Handa and Golf Ireland combined about three, four months ago. So um, ISPS Handa are sponsoring the disability sector in Ireland, which is fantastic. Uh, I've been very lucky to work closely with them the last couple of years um, with Disability Golf. And since Golf Ireland came on board, they've been fantastic. I think they came on board about three, four years ago with Disability Golf. And they're always trying enthusiastic things to trying to make the game more inclusive, to try and get everyone involved. And this was the perfect event that had a gross competition and a net competition. So it, it was definitely event, an event for everybody. And it was incredible. And first of all, congratulations, because you did win it, which is also a massive plus since it's the first yeah. event. Um, tell us about how you played the weekend. Yeah, I played some really, really good golf. Um, the first day on Monday, it was very, very uh, breezy. The winds were, were pretty nuts and I shot three over with triple bogey and laid an eagle in there as well. So I played really good golf. I kind of I kind of dug in and stuck in the first day and thankfully had a three shot lead going into Tuesday and uh, got off to a flyer. I was three under after 10 holes. I think I got up to a seven shot lead and then started thinking a little bit too much. And uh, Alan Gaynor was chasing my tail through at that hold back nine. I had a bad double bogey on 11 kind of derailed me a wee bit and bogeys on 13 and 14. So um, it was it was nerve-wracking coming in because Alan birdied 15 and 16. There was only three shots in it with three to go and anything can happen. Sorry, two shots in it with three to go. And um, Alan double bogeyed 17. I bogeyed it and I had two shot, three shot lead going in the last, which was... Um, it was comfortable, I'll say. I wouldn't. I didn't want a one shot lead. I wanted a wee bit more than that, and uh, yeah, it was great. Well, look, congratulations. Um, you mentioned there that getting into your head is small, but when you do that on the golf course, Brendan, how do you find yourself maybe removing yourself from the situation when that happens? Yeah, it's weird because when I was playing so well, I was I wasn't really thinking of what was going on. I was just playing golf, and then when someone's chasing the lead, you start. Well, I start thinking about what shots I'm trying to hit, and which isn't good for me because I'm such a field player and I just do what I do on the course. But uh, Alan put a lot of pressure on me, so it was nice to come to the end of the round and, and still win it. And uh, definitely situations like that, you learn a lot from them to how to deal with it when it comes comes the next time. Yeah, I was going to say, like, when you have someone chasing you like that, it probably adds the pressure, but sometimes that pressure can lead to good because you'll go home and you'll think about how you dealt with it. And obviously the weekend was you dealt with it perfectly. Yeah, 100%. And it's it's great to see so many good Irish players that can contend at that level. So I, I play G4D events against the best in Europe. So I hope that gives Alan a lot of confidence that he can get to that stage as well. If he can compete against me, he can, he can compete against anyone in the world, which is a great sign. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's fantastic. I hope these guys get a lot more opportunities. Uh, Golf Ireland had ranking points for this event, so he'll get some points as well. So um, it, it's definitely a plus. I suppose it's a new and exciting initiative that um, uh, maybe that you'll do more of now, Brendan. Yeah, we, um, I've been working closely with Neil Manship the last couple of years. And uh, as, as my coach, but he liaises with me through all this stuff now, which is great because um, I've seen all how, how disability events run over the world and they're not 100% familiar because it's so new and it's so nice to have a conversation with Neil on, on how to do something better. But I can truly say this event ran as smoothly as an event I ever played. We were in between tea times and um, we had starters, we had referees. Everything was in line. I think they've done really a fantastic job. 
Amazing. And let's hopefully we see more of those initiatives because they said you found it a great weekend and it gave other golfers a chance to be included the weekend. Um, it's a big year for yourself, of course, Brendan, defending um, G4D Open this year. Are you excited about that? How is that heading in? With that in the back? Yeah, hundred percent. I was uh, I was over in Woburn last week doing a bit of promotional stuff with Iona Stevens, so it's getting very exciting. Um, obviously, I won it last year. It's hard to win something twice, especially with with the talent that's out there now. But I think Woburn's definitely a course that suits my game. I'm I'm pretty straight off the tee, and um, I feel my putting's in a place where I hasn't been the last year. I'm putting really well. And if I can go out the same as I did last year, I'll be really happy. Look, you're after an eventful weekend now. And so what do you do, I suppose, in the days after a, a big event like this? Like, how do you get the body back right, the mind back right? What do you do? Yeah, I was kind of, I was probably meant, a wee bit mentally drained today because you're in the heat of battle. I haven't won in nearly a year having won after the G4 the Open. So winning again is very, very good for your confidence, but it does drain you. Um, I have, I'm heading to America in two weeks. We have a G4 the event on the PGA Tour, which is huge. That's our first time in America playing um, G4 the event. So if we can crack into America and maybe get three or four events over on that side of the pond, it would be huge for the game. Of course it would. And for you as well, heading there, Brendan, I mean, it must be really exciting at the thoughts going out there for that PGA event in a couple of weeks. Yeah, big time. And, and my game's in good shape as well. It's like with disability golf, you're there to represent the game. But at the end of the day, we're all competitors. We all want to win. We have the same emotions as any other golfer. So my goal is not to come second, not to come third. I want to go out and win that. And I've been very lucky to be the first to do a lot in the sport and, and the first event over there, win that, be, be massive. And with winning the weekend, I presume that'll give you nothing but confidence going forward for the next couple of weeks. Yeah, big time. When I go back to the position I was in, sort of my game was crumbling towards the end of the round when there was a bit of pressure. So if I can get myself into that position, maybe coming down the stretch in, in America, I can deal with it a little bit better than I did at the West. So yeah, it's great. And come here, outside of golf now, Brendan, surely there's something you do outside of golf to take your mind off it, or are you just golf, 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 golf? Is it just all golf that's up here? Definitely not. I'm, uh, I am I live two lives, one golf and one normal life. It's, okay. uh, I feel what's I have that balance what's very normal, good. What's normal life? So tell us. We'd like to know a bit about Normal that. life, uh, me and my fiancé, we love going out, going for food maybe twice a week. We go out for a meal. Um, we're both big into the Gaelic football. We love watching it. My brother plays every Saturday with a senior team in, in County Loud. So I definitely go to a game the weekend, maybe go out for food that night. Like cooking at home as well. Uh, going to see family, friends, all that sort of stuff. Golf is like, I love the game, but I don't focus on it 100% of my time. I focus on it when I need to focus on it. But that's important, though, because I feel like, you know, it's your job, like, and you need to step away from these things at the end of the day or else maybe the love for it wouldn't always be there. Exactly. And my cousin's a professional as well. Like today he came up, we played around in the simulator. That's just fun. Golf's fun. Like, I, I love playing golf and I, I love the separation of when it's tournament time and when it's fun. So that balance is very important. What's the setup like at home? Did I uh, did I hear right in saying that you have your own trackman at home, Brendan? Yeah, I'm very lucky. Um, we, we built the house two years ago and I fitted in a, a simulator room. So we can play any course in the world. I'm very lucky. It's not the same as going out and playing 18 holes in a normal course, but through winter, it's it's definitely a haven just to go in there. <laughs> like every Friday night, the, the boys come down, we have a few beers and play golf and it's a uh, it's it's good crack that must be the dream my other half now is a big golfer as well Brendan. if he <laughs> hears this now at all about this being built in the house <laughs> i feel like i could be persuaded into something like it as well um look what a setup i mean your friends must love coming over and getting involved as well and probably like asking you for advice and how's their swing and how do they do this and that do they do that to you always oh the odd time now I have another cousin that plays. He's he's not the best golfer in the world. <laughs> Frank Gillian's off about six or seven. Good player. So we give him a 36 handicap. Me and Killian plays off six. I play off scratch. And we 
whoever loses has to buy the takeaway that night. So it's, <laughs> it's a bit of crack. I love it. I love it. And you're also part of Modest Golf, Brendan. What, what's that like and what's the support like for that? Yeah, so I joined Modest Golf. I think I'm with them now four and a half, nearly five years when I when I turned professional. All I can only speak highly of the guys. Um, I meet Niall probably five, six times a year at events, uh, probably mostly parties <laughs> that we go to after events and stuff. And I'm very lucky. They've, um, when you're a disability golfer, you should be, but may, sometimes you don't feel included into, say, a management team or get treated the same way. But all I can say is Modest have treated me normal from day one, got me endorsement deals, got me into events, pro-ams. They've done everything I could have dreamed of and they've made a career out of golf for me and I'm very lucky. Um, Another thing that I'm, I, I share the same thing as you, I have met Niall a few times with my job in the radio. Lovely. And you, you've met him golf-wise. Such a nice down-to-earth Irish lad. Can we just agree on that? Yeah, when you well, I went to his concert in uh, Dublin this year, and how modest he is on stage. It's like meeting him when when he talks on stage and you meet him in person. There's no difference. He's just a genuine nice lad, and I think he wants to help people at all costs and whatever he can do in the world of golf to help people. He's he's a hundred percent doing. And where can I get an invite to these parties, Brendan, with, with yourself in mind? <laughs> I, I have too many plus ones at the minute, but I'll add you to the list. <laughs> Thanks very much, ones. Brendan. Thanks. You're putting me <laughs> at the bottom of the list, I'd say. <laughs> but uh, no, I'm very lucky. It's I'm very lucky to be able to do what I do and, and I love I love it as well. You mentioned about being, you know, that they made it so important that you were included and it, it was never any different. Do you think people's thoughts and minds about including golfers like yourself is changing? A hundred percent. Like even talking with Neil Manship and Golf Ireland, they're they're talking about golf clubs being more inclusive for people with disabilities. But at the end of the day, people that have disabilities and golf handicaps, if you've one leg and you play off five or six, and people some with two legs play us off five or six, there's no way to approach them differently than the guy that plays off the same handicap. And I think that's where people get them wrong. The, the word disability, to kind of tiptoe around it. We're all normal people at the end of the day. We lived our life. We're capable of playing good golf. Um, I think the cliche of having a disability is a lot greater than what people think. Because if you go to someone that has one arm and they play off nine, they don't want to be treated any differently because mm -hmm. they're a good golfer. Only thing different, if someone has one leg, you may need a buggy which isn't hard to organise. So that's the little things. Someone in a chair is a little bit different. And they could have, say, a higher handicap of 54, but they're still a golfer at the end of the day. And they should be welcome in any golf club, I think. Of course. And let's just hope that, you know, people get educated on these sorts of things. As Brendan, sometimes it's it's just education. It's not that they, yeah. they're they unaware. It's just that they're not educated about these things. or may, As you said, they're tiptoeing around it. Yeah, and I think the golf the golf event we had at the West opened a lot of eyes, especially in Ireland. The the great work we're doing in Ireland, we we want as many people to see what we do. And there was a few crowds watching us and on the first at eighteen and wherever they were at the course. And it's important for these guys to know just because you have a disability, it doesn't mean they're hack jobs, you know what I mean? <laughs> they can they can play golf, they can um, they approach the game in the exact same way, whether you have a disability or not. And I, I think that's important for people to know. How would you find things like social media, Brendan, and being in the public eye? Do you do you sometimes see people saying things online? Do you know, have you experienced things like this before? Yeah, 100 percent I think you get this everywhere. It's like Conor McGregor experiences a lot of hate. Rory McIlroy experiences a lot of hate. But if you have a disability, your hate's a lot different to theirs. Their hate is because you don't like them. Our hate is because there's something different about you. I've experienced it. Um, I done a post a couple of months ago. Yeah. I hit a shot in Japan and it hit the pin and went over social media. And there was really, really bad comments, like say mini golf or all this, like the war stuff, all that. But I've got that my whole life and it never affected me. And it still doesn't to this day. But my brother approached me and said, would you, would you ever think of highlighting that? 
I said, it, it's never annoyed me. It annoys you more than annoys me. He said, yeah, but it's important for you to be, you're a spokesperson for the game. It's probably important you highlight stuff like that. So I contacted Mark at Modest Golf. And I said, what do you think of maybe highlighting this situation? And he said, yeah, I think it's a great idea. So Modest done a graphic of the really bad comments, a picture of me. And then I spoke for about two minutes after it about how it could, if someone's struggling with mental health, how much that one comment could affect them, never mind 100 comments. So basically, it was a coping neck mechanism for people that have disabilities to, because they're going to be in the public eye a lot more, they're going to be in the social media a lot more. So as you said, it's to educate people not to give really, really negative comments or small mind, say small-minded things online. So, But the great thing about it was that that, message went viral it went uh when Niall Horan shared it Shane Lowry Rory McIlroy got on to me some of the greats of the world got on to me and it definitely wasn't a publicity stunt it was really to educate people on what we do and posts have gone up since and there's no negative comments so it hit home and that's what we want and I think you're so right to share that because you probably like nipped it in the bud and all the haters then that seen the nice comments were like, oh, look at all the support he's getting. I'm mortified for even doing that in the first place. Yeah, it's embarrassment. It's embarrassment. 100%. It's it's such embarrassment on their behalf. But you mentioned, you know, you were strong enough. It didn't let it get you. But like family and friends are probably upset around you. But what if someone wasn't able to take those comments? You know what I mean? Yeah. Sorry, yeah, go on. If they weren't in the right, you know, maybe it was like you're after a bad weekend and, you know, mm-hmm. you were struggling a bit. And then this comment is your, the last straw. Yeah. People like people don't think about people's mental health these days. And it's such a sensitive subject. And as I said, one comment can tear someone down. Never mind many. And I just thought it was. I just thought I'd take example. And basically, if it doesn't affect me, it shouldn't affect you. So that's that's all I did. And. To me, it wasn't a big deal because it doesn't affect me, but the message was strong. It got, it got out to a lot of eyes and and that's the message we want to we wanna spread because golf is a game for everyone. And if someone's seen a comment like that, it might put them off playing the game and they play that game because of their mental health as well. So yeah. it's not a good thing. No, fair play to you. And I, I think everyone was, you know, really admirable of you doing so at the time because it was such a powerful thing to do. So fair play to you in the first place for doing that. Um, yeah. Let's talk about the next few weeks. What's down the line? You're obviously heading to America now. You need to pack the old suitcase. Are you heading yeah. to some nice weather? Whereabouts in America? We're going to Texas. So I'm doing two weeks in Texas. I'm going out a week early before the event. And I'm getting some warm weather practice in because Ireland is a bit horrendous at the minute. <laughs> so uh, I have a course set up there to practice for a weekend. And then we go to TPC Craig Ranch to play the Monday and Tuesday of the Byron Nelson uh, CJ Cup. So it's huge. I'm really excited. First, second time playing golf in America. I haven't played golf in America much. So it's a fantastic journey. And hopefully there's so many veterans in America that are missing limbs, all that sort of stuff. So if we can get the message out there, we can get a world tour pretty quick, hopefully. Amazing. Well, best of luck for that. And before I let you go, I think it's important to share that um you are also world number two at the moment, which is a a serious, serious achievement, Brendan. Like, uh, how does that make you feel to be like second in the world? Like, it's it's crazy to even say that. Yeah, it's mental. I was world number one for eight months, mm-hmm. and I know I'm name dropping here, but I, I chat with Rory McIlroy about it, and I was number one for for eight months, and I lost it. And I tried to chat with him. I said, you were number one for so long. How did you deal with losing and going number two? He said, I felt like I had to lose it to regain my focus to get it back. And I didn't know how I was feeling about losing it. And that was exactly how I was feeling. I got very complacent at number one. I didn't practice as much as I am now. I really took a back seat with the golf because I felt, well, it's a bit easy now, which is a complete wrong, wrong attitude. And I was winning. I won three events in a row. Then I went, lost one, and won another two in a row. Stayed number one. And then Kip Papa has dominated since. And he's overtook me now. And he's a pretty big lead. So I feel I had to lose it to regain my focus to try and get back 100%.
Fair play, Chen. Since your yeah. name, since your name drop him, I have to ask you this because to me, like he is so impressive, and it's it's mad for you to say, oh, I just had a chat with Rory, and yeah, yeah. Um, what are these guys like in support of you and what you're doing? Yeah, it's incredible, and we'd be very lucky to play at events that the top guys are at. And it's like a game relationship. It's like we don't go out for dinner with them. We don't do that. But they give you your time on, on the range or the golf course or if you're in the clubhouse. They'd sit down and have a chat for five minutes. Like I had food with Shane, Larry and Rory a few times when they were at an event. And they just talk to you like you're another golfer. Like how do you find the course set up? Uh, what distance are you playing the course this week? What's your approach? And then general chat about family as well. It's, they're very, very normal people. Anyone you meet is is very, very nice and 100% supportive of what you do. Amazing. Before I let you go, what's the goal for this year? So what's on the mind? What's 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 the plan? Yeah, I want to, um, I think getting back to number one this year is going to be a hard stretch with Kips really dominating the game the last year. So <clears throat> I think getting to number one is going to be pretty tough, but definitely making a gap in the rankings. So... I want to win probably another two more events. We have four more events on the DP World Tour calendar along with the PGA. So if I can go out and win two, I think that's a great achievement. Even one's a great achievement. Uh, retaining the G40 Open would be massive. I'd love to do that. And then also getting more people into the game. Uh, we're crying out for women especially to come into disability golf. Trying to get disability... We have a, European team championships at the minute and we're looking for another lady to to play and I think especially around disability golf people sometimes have the perception that there's nothing wrong with them and they actually would qualify under the regulations of the game so if there's any ladies or even male out there that want to reach out and I can point them in the right direction to have a chat with someone to see are they eligible and I think it's important we get as many people into this as possible. Brilliant. Well, a fair play. And as you said, if anyone is listening, reach out to Brendan. He'd be more than happy to point you in the right direction. Brendan, honestly, thank you so much for your time. I know you're after a long weekend and congratulations again on the win. All right. Thanks so much, Valerie. It's really good chatting to you. Um, it's time for you now to pack the, the cowboy boots and hat as you head off to Texas. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I have all them in the bag. So I'll bring a few stuff home as well. So, so no, I'm really looking forward. I was never there before. So. It'll be good. Brendan, have a fabulous time and thanks again. Well do. Thanks so much. Thanks to Brendan Lawler there for that brilliant chat with Valerie and we wish Brendan all the best with the rest of the season. As always on the Golf Ireland pod, we finish with some news. We'll start with the LPGA Tour and the week gone by, the Ford Championship took place with Leona Maguire and Stephanie Meadow teeing it up in Arizona. Nelly Corda walked away with her third win on the spin with Leona 10 shots back, tied for 45th on 10 under. Stephanie unfortunately missed the cut with back-to-back -back power rounds, not enough to send her through to the weekend. This week, both women are taking part in the T-Mobile match play in Las Vegas with a new format to the event this year, where 96 players compete over 36 holes of stroke play Wednesday and Thursday with the final 18 holes for those that make the cut on Friday before the top eight go forward to the match play on the weekend. It is the final LPGA event before the season's first major, the Chevron Championship, starting April the 18th. Sticking with women's golf and on the LET Ladies European Tour, Lauren Walsh finished tied for 16th last week in the New South Wales Women's Open. She was four under for the tournament with rounds of 70 and back-to-back -back 71s. Olivia Mahaffey also teed it up at the Australian event, missing the cut on six over. The Australian Women's Classic is up next for Lauren and Olivia, with the former currently sitting 34th on the LET Order of Merit. Switching to the PGA Tour, where Podrick Harrington missed the cut at the Houston Open, ending his week on four over. Not enough to get him through to the weekend action. Rory McIlroy and Seamus Power will join Harrington in Texas as all three are set to play in the Valero Texas Open. A big event for a lot of players with the final invite to the Masters on offer for the winners at the TPC San Antonio. And of course, with the Irish amateur season kicking off last weekend with the West of Ireland Championship, we have a host of fantastic tournaments on the way this summer. And Flo Gas, who have been a great supporter of the amateur game here in Ireland, have announced they will be extending their partnership with Golf Ireland 
supporting the Flow Gas Irish Men's Amateur Open Championship, the Flow Gas Irish Women's Amateur Open Championship, the Flow Gas Irish Girls Open Championship, and the Flow Gas Irish Mixed Foursomes, and of course the inaugural Flow Gas Irish Boys Amateur Open Championship, which takes place this week in Ballybunion. Well, that is all we have time for on today's Golf Ireland pod. Thanks again to Brendan Lawler and to Valerie Wheeler. Of course, Stephen and Valerie will be back with you next week. But for me, Queen Bryn Allen, good luck and we'll see you again.